Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. It was still dark, and the tomb was dark, and it was empty too, like church buildings across this country have been empty and dark. Churches large and small have stayed quiet. Vacant pews gather dust. The organ sits without wind or note. A hymn book rests in a holder with a bulletin from a service held sometime back in March crammed inside. For what seems like forever, the photocopier has been silent, the coffee maker cold, the nursery and Sunday school rooms idle, the parish hall and office void of laughter, and the hum of a community gathered in hope and in praise. Instead, all is bare and silent. And Mary Magdalene is turned back from the empty tomb, afraid of what might be. For the last number of weeks, we too have been turned away from our church buildings as a measure to contain and slow the spread of COVID-19, afraid of what might be. And it's not just churches, but restaurants and bars, schools and theaters too, that have remained unoccupied. Behind each storefront and business are people, ordinary families striving to make ends meet, whose lives have been turned upside down by a tiny microbe that has swept around the world. This pandemic reminds us of how connected we are as a human family, how we hold all things in common, it reminds us of our fragility, resilience, and our grief too. We are reminded of the many who have recovered, and we remember those who have not. And we continue to pray for their family members who have taken the sorrow-filled walk to the grave to bury family and friend. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear. And yet somehow through lock and wood, hinge and handle, the resurrected Lord stood among them and breathed on them, filling them with wind and note. Peace, he said. Peace, or shalom, is more than the absence of strife, more than a ceasefire. It's more like the hardness of fear and anger, pain and grief being turned into joy and laughter. Like winter being turned into spring, or the soul embracing forgiveness and letting go. For weeks we have been locked away, self-isolated, socially distanced from one another to flatten the curve. For weeks, we have watched symptoms, cautious and afraid of what might be. And yet, in these moments, the separated church has found ways to pray and Zoom, live stream and post, stay connected with neighbor, be kind to strangers, offer help and witness to the love, courage and peace that is in us. We have watched the heroic measures of doctors and nurses, research workers and medical officers, grocery clerks and emergency services personnel, government leaders and community members the world over working for the common good, for peace, for shalom, and we are deeply grateful. On the first day of the week, the doors were locked for fear, and that first day is coming and it is very soon. When the church once separated, self-isolated, socially distanced will come back and the church will break in through the doors of the buildings that were once locked. The faithful will step back in to fill the pews, pick up hymn books, be filled with wind and note, speak shalom to one another, break bread and pour out wine, and sing the first word of the first day of the week. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah.